another edition of Bistec on Ghana Web TV with me, Na Oyokote. You're welcome and stay tuned as I bring you all things business, including stories that trended during the week and an exclusive interview. The rapid increment in petroleum products is becoming burdensome on consumers. Now, the phenomenon has been attributed to the city's decline against major foreign currencies and the ongoing tensions between Russia and Ukraine. Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Duncan Amwa, joins us on Bistec as he unravels factors that results in fuel price hikes, the impact on consumers, and the way forward for Ghanaians. My colleague, Maoli Aholumega, has the details. Prices of petroleum products are expected to increase significantly in the second pricing window for March this year. The move is expected to impact on consumers as well as increase the cost of living in the country. But why has there been a persistent hike in the prices of petroleum products from the beginning of 2022? We unpack this through a conversation with an expert from the petroleum sector. Before I introduce my guest on this week's edition of Bistec, I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. My name is Maoli Aholimega. <music> Welcome back from that break. Duncan Amwa is my guest on this week's edition of Bistec. Duncan is the Executive Secretary for the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers. Duncan, welcome to Bistec. How are you doing? Um, very well. And you? I'm doing very well. Good to see you. It's been a while. Uh, I would have said good to see you. <laughs> I'm happy to see you, but I'm not happy. Why are you not happy? Uh, Mauli, we've been complaining about fuel mm. for the past one year. It looks the more we talk, the more Ghanaians complain. Uh, the more things get worse, uh, you wonder whether there's a leadership response. And so we are effectively contemplating probably jumping on the streets. Mm. Maybe when we talk, they don't hear. <laughs> so perhaps we might join them on the streets and in their offices uh, to remind them that fuel is becoming a disaster on our hands as Ghanaians. Yeah. So I want to come from the beginning of the year. We saw some very astronomical increments in fuel. Um, from your from your point of view and COPEC as an organization, how is the sector faring, especially with these increments? You see, everybody has their challenge currently. Um, what you find with the BDCs is that the monies that they have invested, their financing is dwindling mm. by the day. Again, if they also have financing fin financing partners, the banks uh, that provide LCs and all, uh, where they take credit to do their importations, you are also jeopardizing the banks because if there's a default, the banks would now have to probably go find the monies elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, then you come to the OMCs, they also complain bitterly that the prices you see at the pumps are suppressed prices. Mm. If they were quoting the actual prices that they should sell the product, uh, we probably would have crossed the nine city mark by now. Mm. Probably 10, 11, 12. Uh, but because of competition, they are also undercutting themselves. So the OMC wing is suffering, BDC is complaining. It doesn't end there. You come to the consumer point, the trotro drivers are nonetheless happy. I've just received an indication that they even want to increase transport fares further. Um, if you go around the country, you would not find a single Ghanaian who would commend authorities for the kind of prices we are seeing at the pumps. Uh, when you talk, others will want to make political, you know, capital of it and uh, say whatever they want to say. But the truth be told, the pump numbers. Mm. No matter how you rationalize, make excuses, justify, and talk, you know, all the political grammar, the pump prices would effectively expose you because 
we seem not to be doing anything. And for the first time uh, since I got to know how to write my name, <laughs> we are smuggling fuel from Togo now into Ghana because Togo wow. is able to give better pricing than Ghana does. It is not good. Mm. But that, is, that, is that a sustainable move? Especially because some also argue that the CD is also struggling against other major trading currencies. We also have the Russia-Ukraine crisis as well. Do you think this is sustainable, that we have to go to Togo to sort of purchase for? Okay. Well, we are not going to Togo to purchase. I'm saying they are rather smuggling petrol oh, now okay. from Togo into Ghana okay. mm. because your prices are higher. Mm. So if somebody gets the yellow gallon and is able to move it into the country, mm. he's probably going to gain. Mm. Um, what we are witnessing currently is multifaceted. You have the geopolitical, the global dynamics at play, mm. and then you also have your local influences also squeezing us. Uh, you cannot do much about Russia and Ukraine. It's not within your domain. Mm. Uh, but you had safety nets that envisioned such times happening. Mm. And that is why the first president of Ghana, Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, thought it wise to put up a refinery mm. because he had seen from the Volta Basin and the other uh, geological seismics that had been done that Ghana was sitting on commercial oil. So he put up a refinery and said, when Ghana is able to get oil, we can refine for our people. Now, post-2010, when we started commercial production of oil, our refinery has never been better. So one of the safety nets that could have given you fuel security, your local refinery, now that you are producing oil in commercial quantities, is down, is out completely. This was one of the single investments that contributed so much to Ghana's GDP. I'm talking of the 1998-99 era. Tor alone was contributing almost 5% to what Ghana's GDP uh, was at the time. As we speak, it's contributing zero because it's shut down. Uh, you also have a lot of very good engineers in there who could turn things around. But the politics of us would not allow that institution to work. So we prefer rather to take our crude outside, get a refinery outside to refine, and then we go for a cargo or a vessel to bring it back to Ghana as refined products. You are creating jobs for those refineries. You are creating wealth for those economies. You are changing your city to dollar to go and bring the finished product. Your refinery is down. So that safety net is off. In the 90s, we also thought, okay, why not build an Oklahoma cushioning type of buffer mm. called BUST that could hold finished products, not crude, so that when there's crisis out there, we cannot probably be able to bring products. BUST will have strategic stocks to let the people uh, be able to go about their day to day. As we speak, BUST doesn't also seem to have a liter mm. of strategic stock that they could put onto the market when Russia, Ukraine gets worse or get, you know, super bad. Mm, okay. So those safety nets are down. And so whatever geopolitical activities occur out there, the trotter driver in Ghana has to pay for it. This is not sustainable. And we think that the earlier our leaders wake up to the reality, the pump prices keep exposing them by the day, but they simply want to just pretend nothing is happening. Okay. Russia, Ukraine is costing your truck driver to pay more for fuel. It means that you fail to plan for them. Okay. All right, Duncan, I'll just take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Yeah, so I've been speaking with Duncan Amwa. He's the Executive Secretary for the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers. And we've been talking about the Ghana's petroleum se sector and the increasing hike in petroleum prices. I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back.
Welcome back from our break. I've been speaking with Duncan Amma, and he's the Executive Secretary for the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers. Duncan, I've been having a very interesting conversation with you. You've been telling me about the geopolitical reasons why we are seeing a lot of fuel price hikes, especially in Ghana. Now, I want to come down back home. There have been some calls that um, we should remove some petroleum taxes. What is COPEC's view on that? Uh, we've sent memos and proposition papers mm. uh, to that effect nothing has been done um, when you move from the geopolitical factors the local influences one of the key ones happens to be the taxes and then of course the city's uh, performance to the dollar mm. uh, if you look at the levels of taxes uh, not sustainable you have finance ministers given blank check by parliament to slap taxes on petrol as and when they will and so fi one finance minister comes says i need revenue the lowest hanging fruit is petrol they slap taxes uh, when they are leaving they don't take out the taxes so they leave another one comes he needs money he also slap taxes and that informs the 13 14 items mm -hmm. That constitute the price build up, largely tax A, tax B, tax C. Some of them were actually introduced to serve as, you know, a gap, a revenue gap, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah. for government because our crude that we export, we expected around 55, it had dropped to about 30. So there was some gap created. We introduced taxes. So that government can be able to realize their target as we speak the reverse is the case yet those taxes are still being charged mm -hmm. the special petroleum tax you have stabilization and recovery levy yeah. you want to stabilize prices for me when world market prices get bad or bullish now it's bad you are still charging me 16 pesos, 14 pesos to stabilize fuel prices. When I ask what you're doing with the money, then they tell you premix. If you need money to subsidize for premix, go back to parliament and say premix subsidy. Mm. 3 pesos, 5 pesos. Then we know we are paying 3 pesos for premix. But don't collect 16 pesos in the name of stabilization and recovery. When we ask, you said you are using it for premix. Mm. That is untenable completely untenable and so whilst we're looking at russia ukraine as some of the contributing factors to why fuel price is so high and is still going higher um, the local influences especially the city and the taxes which is within our domain and control uh, is what most Ghanaians are looking up to authorities to do something about because russia ukraine you can't stop them mm. Yeah. But you can put in measures to ensure your city performs well. You can also put in measures to ensure that as crude prices rise, as cost of finished products also escalate, you can at least decelerate on the taxes a bit. But you talk, they won't probably do anything about it. So then the fanatics will come and make excuses. And then you go to the pumps, it's gone up again. It's just been one bad cycle and we hope that within the next seven day period mm. we would hear something meaningful and significant if we don't we'll jump onto the streets mm. and probably make sure that this time around um we are not speaking grammar probably <laughs> we'll, we'll walk the grammar yeah. on the street so that they can hear us very loud and clear mm. petrol is too too high for ghanaian pockets currently okay yeah, Duncan, so finally um there have been some calls for the thermal oil refinery to be given some some strategic partnership in in terms of to help it you know revamp its operations finally just your final take what are your views on that and where do you think this form of strategic partnership where do you think where do you see it going you see you cannot be an oil producing country mm. only to export everything you produce with no strategy or plan in place to also serve your local market. What Tor would have done to the Ghanaian market would be to provide the fuel security we need. Mm -hmm. But due to our unnecessary politicking, 
toys on its knees. It cannot work. Mm. Ghanaians are still paying for toll debt since 2003. We are paying. Yeah. We are not putting in the right investments. We are not able to upgrade their tools, plant, and equipment. So, uh, what you put in, you are lucky to get it out mm. in same quantity. You probably make losses. We are not putting in any investment. It is still a viable, you know, asset. Mm. If the government doesn't have <coughs> the resource to put in immediately or inject, sell toll for a dollar, like others have said, <laughs> so that a strategic investor can put in the needed resources, can be given the free hand to work or operate, and ensure that toll is run as an economically viable concern, not an arm of, you know, our politicking that allows us to flood the place with 800 people when 150 can sustain operations. Not when we are appointing people simply because of a political reasoning, but they should come with the wherewithal, the competence and KPIs that we can measure and hold them to. If you do these things, you will be able to revamp tour. And I have said refineries are profitable. Mm -hmm. It is the only reason people are building new ones like the Dangote refinery. They are injecting so much because they know it would not only serve the country, but it would also create a certain economy around it. Duncan, thank you very much. And so I've been speaking with Duncan Amwa, and he's the executive secretary for the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers. And we've been talking about the petroleum sector and the persistent hikes in petroleum products across the country. He's been my guest on this week's edition of Best Tech. Many thanks for watching. My name is Maori Aholimeka. Thank you, Maori. Up next is Biz Headlines. On to our first story on the CD's performance. Now, the Ghana CD has passed the 8 CD mark to sell at 8 CDs 12 pesos. This is according to Afri Swap. The CD is, however, trading against the dollar at a buying price of 7 CDs 94 pesos, whilst the British pound is selling at 10 CDs 17 pesos and buying at 10 CDs 17 pesos. The euro is also at 8 CDs 33 pesos and buying at 8 CDs 53 pesos as at the time of filing this report. Meanwhile, there have been calls on the government to take actions to stabilize the CD against other major trading currencies. The Importers and Exporters Association has also called on the government to peg the CD at a fixed rate. As it says, the constant increase, the constant increase is affecting the price of imports. The price of eggs sold in the country has witnessed a 10% increment effective March 14, 2022, according to the Poultry Farmers Association of Ghana. This will mean consumers will now purchase a crate of eggs between 27 Ghana cities and 35 Ghana cities, depending on the size and location of purchase. National President of the Association, Napoleon Ajuman, in an interview said the increment is due to the high cost of poultry feed and medication for day-old chicks also going up. On the redevelopment of the Ghana Trade Fair site, the company has signed a memorandum of understanding with Singapore-based developer Stella Holding Limited. According to reports, Stella Holding Limited will see to the injection of U one billion U.S. dollars sourced by the firm for the redevelopment of the trade fair site in Accra. Chairman of the Ghana Trade Fair, Dr. Daniel Macaulay, delivering brief remarks after the signing ceremony, said Stella Holding Limited will establish a joint venture company for the development of a 65-acre of the 140-acre large trade fair site. This is great news for Ghana, the people of La and the African continent as a whole. The COVID-19 pandemic dealt a big blow to our plants as investors cooled off. So we are happy to get back fully on track with such serious group of credible investors as well. Minister of Information Kojo Opo Nkuma has said 
government has been engaging in discussions aimed at easing COVID-19 induced land border restrictions and measures to mitigate escalating fuel price hikes. According to him, President Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado has in the past two days been engaging relevant stakeholders in a bit to mitigate the situation, which is having an effect on livelihood and businesses. In a tweet posted on Thursday, March 17, 2022, the information minister wrote, Yesterday and today at N. Ekufuado has been engaged in meetings in preparation to announce easing of restrictions at our borders and tackling escalating fuel prices. On ECG disconnections, the electricity company of Ghana has disconnected power supply to the Ghana Airports Company Limited over debts owed to the tune of 49 million Ghana cities. According to ECG, the debts have been accumulated over the years. ECG's tax force embarked on this exercise as part of measures to address power challenges and Iran customers. It is, however, worth noting that this disruption of power at the airport does not affect travels and other businesses at the terminals. Right. To our final story on the Ghanaian economy, Professor Stephen Adai, a former chairman of the Ghana Revenue Authority, has urged the government to reduce its expenditure in order to save the economy. According to him, the only way to salvage the economy, which is facing some challenges, is through a reduction in the earnings of government appointees and other Article 71 of his holders. Professor Adai said in an interview that a reduction in expenditure will help the government to mobilize funds and address some pertinent issues in the country. He explained, why should a country like Ghana have about four or five ministries of transport? It's incredible. In other countries, we have one minister and then we have technical heads of these institutions. So we can reduce the size of government. Actually, under this circumstance, I think that the executives and other things must have a pay cut. Maybe 25% will do. That's all we have for you on this week's edition of Bistec on Ghana Web TV. But log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more stories. Follow us on all our social media handles. On Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, we are at the Ghana Web. On YouTube, we are Ghana Web TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for joining. My name is Na Oyokote. Have a great weekend.